In 2020, Bombardier did something almost unthinkable. They walked away from commercial aviation. No new airliners, no next generation jets, no future roadmap. And yet right now, at this exact moment, thousands of Bombardier built aircraft are flying passengers every single day. They're operating for Delta, United, American, Lufthansa, Air Canada, ANA, and dozens of other airlines across the globe. They dominate short haul routes. They anchor regional airline networks. So how does a company that quit the game still control one of the most critical segments of global aviation? This is the Bombardier Paradox. To understand the paradox, you have to rewind to a time when regional aviation barely existed in any meaningful form. Before the late 1970s and early 1980s, airline networks were built almost entirely around large jets. Boeing 727s, early 737s, and DC-9s connected major cities, while smaller towns were often underserved or ignored. If you lived outside a major metro area, Flying usually meant long drives to hubs or infrequent service on aging turboprops that struggled with reliability and passenger perception. Regional aviation wasn't a growth strategy, it was a compromise. Bombardier saw the gap long before most airlines did. The shift began with the Dash 8, following Bombardier's acquisition of de Havilland Canada in the mid-1980s. The Dash 8 wasn't designed to impress passengers with luxury, it was designed to perform. Short runways, harsh weather, high cycle counts and fast turnarounds. For airlines operating in Canada, Scandinavia, island chains and mountainous regions, this reliability changed everything. But turboprops alone weren't the end goal. Bombardier identified a deeper shift happening inside airline strategy. Hub and spoke networks were expanding rapidly, especially in North America. Airlines weren't just trying to serve small cities, they were trying to feed hubs multiple times a day, reliably and profitably. This insight led to a much bolder idea. In the early 1990s, Bombardier launched the Canadair regional jet, later known simply as the CRJ. At the time, many industry analysts believed jets were too expensive for short regional routes. Fuel burn was higher, maintenance was more complex, the economics didn't appear to work. Bombardier bet against that thinking. They believed passengers preferred jets over turboprops. They believed speed, altitude, and comfort mattered even on short flights. And most importantly, they believed frequency mattered more than size. That bet paid off. CRJ-100 and CRJ-200 transformed regional aviation almost overnight. Airlines can now operate frequent jet service between smaller cities and major hubs. Business travelers embraced it. Airlines redesigned schedules around it. Airports expanded regional terminals to accommodate it. Bombardier didn't stop there. They scaled the concept with the CRJ-700, CRJ-900, and later the CRJ-1000, carefully tuning each model to airline needs, pilot contracts, and operational limits. By the mid-2000s, Bombardier wasn't just participating in regional aviation, they were defining it. Entire airline business models were built around Bombardier aircraft. Pilot career pipelines, maintenance programs, training infrastructure, and route networks all evolved with the CRJ at their center. By the mid-2000s, Bombardier had quietly accomplished something extraordinary. They made regional aviation strategically essential, not optional. And if you like this kind of deep dive aviation storytelling, the kind that explains why the industry works the way it does, make sure you're subscribed. These stories make a lot more sense once you see how the pieces connect. Bombardier's downfall didn't come from regional aviation, it came from ambition. In the early 2010s, Bombardier launched the most aggressive program in its history, the C-Series. This wasn't an incremental step, it was a full leap into the mainline narrowbody market, directly against Airbus and Boeing. From a technical standpoint, the aircraft was exceptional. Composite wings, advanced aerodynamics, Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan engines, fuel efficiency that outperformed older A320s and 737s. On paper, the C-Series was exactly what airlines claimed they wanted. But aerospace history shows that engineering excellence alone doesn't win markets. The C-Series suffered from cost overruns that ballooned into the billions. Development stretched longer than planned. Certification delays slowed deliveries. Cash burn accelerated. And unlike Airbus or Boeing, Bombardier didn't have the scale to absorb prolonged losses. Airbus and Boeing responded predictably. They cut prices. They bundled fleet deals. They leveraged global support networks Bombardier couldn't match. Even when airlines loved the airplane, sales were difficult. Financing was harder. Leasing companies hesitated. 
residual values were uncertain. Every deal required extraordinary effort. At the same time, Bombardier faced pressure on all sides. Low-cost carriers were bypassing hubs. Pilot shortages were raising labor costs. Embraer was gaining momentum with its e-jets. Bombardier began selling assets to survive. The C-Series was handed to Airbus and reborn as the A220. The CRJ program was sold to Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Eventually, Bombardier exited commercial aviation entirely. On paper, this should have been the end. Bombardier loses, market moves on, the aircraft fade away. But that's not what happened. Today, thousands of Bombardier-built aircraft remain in active service worldwide. CRJ-700s and CRJ-900s operate dense daily rotations across North America. Dash-8s continue flying critical routes in Canada, Europe, and island regions where reliability matters more than speed. This persistence isn't accidental, it's structural. In the United States, pilot scope clauses limit the size, weight, and seating capacity of aircraft flown by regional affiliates. For decades, Bombardier engineered its aircraft to fit perfectly inside those limits. That makes CRJ-700s and CRJ-900s extremely difficult to replace. But scope clauses are only part of the story. Airlines have spent decades building infrastructure around Bombardier aircraft. Full motion simulators, maintenance hangars, spare parts inventories, training programs, dispatch and performance systems. Replacing an aircraft type means retaining crews, recertifying mechanics, retooling operations, and absorbing reliability risks during transition periods. Airlines are conservative organizations for a reason. Reliability protects margins, consistency protects contracts, familiarity protects operations. Replacing Bombardier aircraft would mean discarding decades of institutional memory. Quick question, were you surprised that Bombardier still has this much influence without building a single new airliner? Let me know in the comments because this is where aviation economics gets really counterintuitive. Globally, the story is even clearer. Dash 8 turboprops still serve routes no jet can economically replace. In harsh environments and low-demand markets, Bombardier aircraft remain the practical solution. Not because they're new, but because they work. Bombardier may be gone, but the system still needs their airplanes. The real reason Bombardier aircraft refuse to disappear isn't loyalty, it's math. Most CRJs and Dash 8s flying today are fully depreciated. That means airlines aren't making lease payments or servicing major financing costs. On the balance sheet, these aircraft are already paid for. In aviation, nothing beats cheap metal. A new regional jet can cost 40 to $50 million. Financing that purchase requires years of high utilization just to break even. For airlines operating on thin margins, that risk can be existential. Bombardier aircraft avoid that risk. Their operating costs are predictable. Their maintenance profiles are well understood. Their performance is sufficient for the mission. Fuel savings from newer aircraft don't always justify replacement, especially when fuel prices fluctuate. Financing costs don't fluctuate. There's also an environmental wrinkle. While newer aircraft are more efficient, manufacturing new airframes carries its own emissions cost. Extending the life of existing aircraft can, in some cases, be environmentally defensible. And here's the final twist. Bombardier still makes money from these aircraft. Even after exiting commercial aviation, Bombardier retained control over key aftermarket services, parts, maintenance programs, technical support. Every CRJ still flying feeds revenue back to a company that no longer builds airliners. They exited manufacturing without exiting profit. Eventually, the Bombardier paradox will end. Airframes age, maintenance costs rise, regulatory pressure increases. Some CRJs will be replaced by Embraers, some Dash 8 routes will disappear altogether, others will transition to different aircraft types. But aviation doesn't change quickly. Airlines don't replace aircraft because something newer exists. They replace aircraft when the old ones stop making money. And right now, Bombardier jets still make money. So, the next time you board a short regional flight, take a look around. You might be flying on the legacy of a company that officially quit years ago. And if you want to see another aviation story where the numbers mattered more than the technology, click the video on your screen right now. It picks up exactly where this one leaves off. Because in aviation, sometimes the most powerful force isn't the newest airplane. It's the one that refuses to leave.